Hey everybody, my name is Josh, and today I'd like to give you a tour of this 2022 Ram Promaster City. A few things I want to mention before we jump into the tour. Bugs landing on me. First is I'll have a bunch of links to a lot of the products that you'll see throughout this van build down below in the description. I also want to say thank you to Redodo for sponsoring this video. They make a lot of battery solutions and we'll actually cover one of their batteries in this build a little bit later on. And then finally, if you are interested in having your van worked on or converted, definitely check out my website, briarwoodvans.com. There's a bunch of info on there as far as what the process looks like, as well as how to get in contact with me. I'll stop rambling and we'll jump into the tour. So one of the first things I want to point out here is the slider doors. This van was a cargo van, so it just had panels. Um, swap those out with some windows, both on the driver's side and the passenger side. And then moving up to the top of the van, we have some dusty solar panels. Um, there's 200 watts of solar on top of this van. And then behind the panels is actually an air conditioning unit. This particular unit runs off, I believe, 12 or 24 volts and it mounts in the same size opening as most of the rooftop vent fans. That's it for the outside. Now we'll pop the back doors open and take a peek on the inside. I keep missing the handle. So here you can get a good look at the general layout of the van. Um, we'll start over here on the left side. I'll go through sort of the bed setup and storage options. We used a three inch foam mattress for this particular bed. Um, the dimensions when it's in the couch position, not including the backrest, uh, it's about 21 inches from the front to the back. And then from the floor to the top of the cushion, it's about 16 inches. So to convert this couch into a bed, there's a slide out mechanism. It uses 500 pound drawer slides to support the extension and actually offer build plans if you're interested in making your own slide out bed. I'll have a link down in the description if you're interested in that. I'll set the camera up on a tripod and show you how the bed works. And by tripod, I mean my ladder. So to set this up in the bed position, you can just slide out that extension and you grab your backrest, pop it down, and then you have your bed set up. When the bed is set up, you can see those heavy duty slides that support the extension. And then the final dimensions for the actual bed itself are 72 inches in length, and you get 36 inches side to side. With that backrest down, you can actually see that there's a little recessed cubby up on the wall here. You'll notice up at the front of the cubby, there's a 12 volt outlet, it has some USB ports, and then a accessory plug-in. And then on this side of the box, there's a 110 outlet that's connected to the inverter that we'll touch on a little bit later. You also may have noticed a little on-off switch here. This is a dimmer switch. It turns on some accent lighting for that back wall or that side wall. Taking the bed apart and putting it back in that couch position is just as simple. You're just gonna pop your smaller cushion up, tip it up against the wall, and you can slide the extension back into place. This bed design also features three storage drawers underneath that slide out bed. They're not sized for anything in specific, but there's a pretty good amount of space in each drawer. And then they're all sitting on soft closed drawer slides. So that provides a little bit of resistance when you try to open them. So that way they don't slide open if you go around a corner too fast. One thing I forgot to mention about this cubby back here is it's all made out of half inch wood. So you could definitely hang something in here if you'd like, or potentially mount something to the base here to keep it from sliding out. There's a little bit of a lip here for, you know, a phone, for example, it won't slide out, but it's a pretty solid little box if you want to modify it to kind of make it your own. If we go over to the passenger side, you're going to see the kind of kitchen cabinet area. Right up top, you're going to notice there's a gooseneck faucet. And the cool thing here is that it can swivel towards the back of the van. Then you're able to pull the end of the faucet out a ways. And then using a magnetic little clip here, you can actually set this up so that it's sort of a, an outdoor shower. If we move that back over into place, you'll see there's a plug here that just gives you a little extra counter space if you need it. And that reveals the 12 inch sink. So this setup uses 
a five gallon tank for the fresh water. Um, and then there isn't a gray water tank. It actually uses just a discharge hose where it drains out the bottom of the van. The cool thing about this tank is that there are actually two caps. One, you can see we have it hooked up to run through the water pump, but then there's a larger cap here that makes it really easy to fill in place if you wanted to. Although there is a quick disconnect here. If you wanna pull the tank out and go fill it at your water source, gives you kind of a couple options, but a lot of times tanks usually have one input, so you do have to disconnect it in order to fill it. And then it just tucks back into place, close it up. All the doors are on soft close hinges, but just for a little added safety, got a little lock there, and that's the on off switch for the water pump. And then right below that, there's a little flip up table here. If you got the doors open, just gives you a little extra surface area. All the butcher block is treated with butcher block oil, so it's all food safe. You could use this as a cutting board. Pop that back down, and then it just stores away in the side of the cabinet. Pop the sink plug back into place, and now you have tons of counter space. Keep rhyming. And then moving towards the center of the van, you'll see there's a storage door up top here. Good for utensils. Um, it is fairly deep, so you could put some larger items in there. Down below that, we have a little space for extra storage. It does share some space with the water pump, but there is a good amount of room for storage down here. And then moving along towards the last little drawer down here, was able to sneak in a little bit of extra storage, um, just big enough for a little electric burner. That runs off that inverter that I mentioned earlier. And then above that, we have the world's smallest fridge maybe. This little fridge is just big enough to fit a couple goodies. It slides out, you can pop the door open, get out what you need, and then close it up. Around the other side of the cabinet here, you'll actually notice that there's a, a grate for venting for that fridge, just to prevent it from getting too hot inside of the cabinet. The last little thing on this side that you'll notice is another set of outlets, both 110 and 12 volt. To the left is another little dimmable on off switch for the overhead ceiling lights. I'll hop over to the slider door now and we'll finish going through what's at the front of the van. If we hop in here, one thing you'll see right away behind the backrest cushion, if I tip this down, there's sort of like a little window nook. Features a little bit of that butcher block that you saw earlier, a little leather snap. We'll let you slide that curtain closed. They're blackout curtains to give you some privacy. And you can slide that open and tuck your curtain out of the way to give you a little bit of light inside the van. And then right over here, you'll see the on off for that inverter. And then below that is a little battery readout monitor. Most of the electrical components can be monitored through an app on your phone, but sometimes it's nice to be able to just have a quick little readout inside the van. If I back up here, you'll actually see a little sort of a tray at the end of the bed here behind the driver's seat, sort of a little catch all space, but this is actually what's containing or covering the auxiliary battery. Accessing your battery is really easy. This whole tray just slides out if you take out the two screws holding it in place. With those screws out, you can slide the tray out. So with that tray out of the way, it reveals our Redodo 200 amp hour lithium battery. Now in all transparency, Redodo did reach out to me to sponsor this video. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But I did just want to say that they don't get to have any input as far as what I say in the video, nor do they get to review it before I post it. But in all honesty, I've had a really good experience working with them, and I'm definitely a fan of their batteries. They're one of the more affordable brands out there, and they have a ton of different varieties and sizes, which definitely comes in handy if you're working on a smaller van because you can kind of configure your electrical system based on, you know, maybe the size that you have available. I know this is a very large capacity battery for this smaller van. Again, this is a 200 amp hour battery. They do offer a 100 amp hour battery and recently released a much smaller size than the majority of 100 amp hour batteries out there, which can definitely come in handy if you're working in a smaller space. So I do encourage everybody, if you are looking to purchase a battery to check out Redodo, I'll have a link down in the description. There is a referral code link that definitely helps me out. Doesn't cost you anything. But again, for transparency's sake, just wanted to be upfront. 
You'll be able to find out all the nitty gritty details on their site as far as tech specs go. But just from a general point of view, I've been very happy with this battery and I'm excited to use their batteries in future van builds. One other thing I'd like to point out is the working experience with Redoto. A lot of times when I try to work with brands, it's very difficult. They are very adamant about what needs to be said and how it's worded. And Redoto gave me full freedom to review the, the product in my own words, which says to me that they're confident in their product. And I just think that's something that's worth being said. So thank you Redoto for supporting this video. And again, links down in the description if you're interested in checking them out. And then I'll go over just a few last things inside the van here. You'll notice up here that there's a pretty good size storage cabinet installed. And this features those soft close hinges to try to keep everything nice and clean. There's just a little bit of a proud edge down here and that's what you're using to open the door instead of a handle of any kind. Up on the ceiling here, you'll see those LED lights. It's hard to see during the day, but pop those on. Again, they're all dimmable. And then of course, you'll see the bottom side of that AC unit. It features a handful of vents as well as a control panel. You can go through the menu, customize the settings to your liking. And it also features a remote if you'd like to control this maybe from the front seats. One last little detail was the window covering for this side. The curtain's actually installed on the door. Similar to the other one, it features a little snap here to keep it tucked to the side. And then you can slide it open and give yourself some privacy. You can see when it's tucked into the side here, it does clear the side of the van with that curtain tie. Now I'll hop over to the driver's side here and we'll go through the electrical system. So back here, you will notice the, again, that little extra butcher block. And then down below that is all the electrical components. You can see that 2000 watt inverter I mentioned earlier, and we wanted to go with an inverter this size so that that little cooktop could be powered. And having such a large battery, we were able to get a lot more power out of it. Above that, you'll see a hub here that houses a lot of the fuses, another fuse for the solar panels, on off for the panels and then the on off for disconnecting from the auxiliary battery and then down over here is a fuse for the dc to dc charger just to try to add as much protection as we can from starter battery auxiliary battery and all the other components of the van well i think that's going to do it for this van tour hopefully i didn't miss anything if I did, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. If you're interested in having a van converted or worked on, definitely visit my website, briarwoodvans.com. There you'll be able to find a bunch of info as far as what that process looks like, as well as how to get in contact with me. I really appreciate you taking the time to check this video out, and I will see you in the next one. There's three different lenses on this phone and I don't know which one to look at.